Hello YouTubers. In this video, what I'm planning to show is some of the airspace system and how to shoot an instrument approach and also to point out some possible suggestions to the ATC system in X-Plane 11 as it goes forward. Right now we're slowly moving into the northern Florida area. We've just departed the Ormond Beach VOR headed for Sanford Airport, Kilo Sierra Foxtrot Bravo. And we're slowing down now as we're transitioning to 2,000 feet which is generally the altitude above ground level that you're going to shoot an ILS approach to. And my altitude is armed. That was the buzzer to let me know. And at about 200 feet above, we'll get another buzzer. And we're coming out of 200 knots. And shortly, we'll put our first notch of flaps in. The aircraft we're using is a Pilatus PC-24, which has just recently been certified by the ESA and the FAA. And here we go, we're going to be leveling off at 2000. And you'll be able to see here momentarily the flaps come down. You'll get a slight balloon. Okay, we're at 10 degrees of flaps. 2000 feet level. Altitude is holding. And the airspeed is bleeding off back to 130 to 140 range. As you make your approach into an airport, ATC will generally give you vectors. And what they'll do in this case is they'll give you vectors most of the time in X-plane at 90 degree angles and that will take you on a base, well from a downwind to a base to a final or an angle that will intercept the final, usually 20 to 30 degrees. Now as the uh, horn goes off in the background, I've been given a command to change course, and quite frankly, the ATC is not going to be hit in the recording. I'll have to do it live to catch that. But they, a lot of times, will give you two conflicting headings as they're trying to figure out how to put you into the uh, proper perspective for a landing. So now, add some power back in and momentarily the gear horn will shut off. And we can continue on with the approach into Sanford. We're going to be going to runway 275 or 27, which is a right runway at Sanford. That's the longest and widest for general aviation and for airlines, as they are about 20 miles away from the McCoy or Orlando International Airport. So what we're doing now is we're trying to get on that final heading that will line us up for the runway. In advance of that, what you want to do is you want to get your approach played out. You want to look at the inbound heading, which in this case is 275 degrees. You want to get the frequency in your number one nav box. sort of get an idea of where the points are and what your sort of intersecting points you want to be to make a nice three degree degree, degree glide slope intercept. Now we're on roughly an intercept course for uh, the base leg just been given now an intercept heading to turn to to get the final from base to final. I'm heading a 250 
give you a roughly a 20 to 25 degree angle intercept. If you look at the moving map on the right hand side of the cockpit, you can see the green arrow is actually pointing at the ILS. So right now you have about 14 degrees of an intercept allowing for the wind. So when you get to about 10 degrees, ATC will give you instructions to join. Now if you look here below, I've got the ILS selected. Glide slope is on the right and magenta. The vertical square box. And as you can see, we're headed sort of down the middle of the intercept path between the segmented arrow, which is what you're going to intercept to do the ILS. And generally speaking, in an aircraft this speed, you know, it's capable of 0.74 Mach and 290 knots by airspeed. You want to stay at about 150 knots with the flaps at 10. And you get a reasonable fuel burn and set you up for a glide slope intercept. Alright, so ATC has basically uh, got us lined up now. And we're burning about 600 pounds of fuel an hour. The ILS is just starting to move the glide slope, so I'm adjusting my power. I generally put the gear down at one notch above intercept. And there comes the case break on the ILS. There go the landing gear down and we're one dot off course and I have selected the localizer and the approach feature which have now captured. So the aircraft is going to start descending momentarily and be on the glide slope. So we're slightly high, slightly right of course, correct at this point, got strobes on, landing lights. I've already positioned my igniters to be on continuously. So in case you ran into rain or something of that nature. And as you can see, we're completely on instruments right this second. Went through 1,700 feet. And 115 knots in the approach just selected flaps 20 and we'll leave it there until landing is assured and we go visual. Alright, we've just broken out of the clouds at about 1500 feet, 1550 and there's the runway directly ahead, flying the command bars and the ILS path and glide slope guidance. So what you're trying to do is get down to your approach speed, when this case is between 100 and 105 knots, that will be fine for this aircraft weight. Awesome. And you can also see next to the uh, directional gyro, just above the uh, altimeter setting, you can see an arrow with 8 knots of wind, about 20 degrees off your right nose. So keep that in mind for when you land, because you'll want to put the right wing down squash a little opposite rudder so you can land straight ahead and not side load the landing gear. Okay, out of a thousand feet, we're on course, on glide path, sinking 780 feet a minute. The approach is stable. So in other words, we can continue. Power is set at about 44% and it's maintaining a, a good stable speed. And the autopilot is now off. I'm hand flying the approach. And it looks like we're slightly pointed to the left side of the runway. That's because we're being pushed by the wind. But we're right in the command bars, holding speed, sinking 420 knots, on course on glide path, stable approach. All right, we've been cleared to land, gears down. 500 feet, we're landing flaps. Our spoilers are armed for deployment on touchdown. It 
So now we're minimums. at minimums. She crossed the end of the runway at about 50 feet and touched down just about the big white patches a thousand feet down the runway are the fixed distance markers. Small power reduction, holding speed. Now we can see what it looks like from outside for a second. Just feeling for the runway now. Very smooth roll on. Speed brakes are out. Aircraft is accelerating. Generally speaking, you land and the runway is yours until you can get it slowed down and make a reasonably safe departure from the runway as opposed to trying to turn off at 50 knots and go up on two wheels. And so now, flaps have been identified and they're retracting. Speed brakes are next. They've been identified and they're retracting. Now we'll follow ATMC instructions and taxi across the two other runways and to the ramp. So, while not a perfect approach, one that you could easily survive, and you could fly that down to about 200 feet, pop out, see the runway, and land. If you have a nice, stable, configured approach as you head in. Anyway, I hope that's proved helpful. Some of the hints that I uh, have run across is ATC doesn't give you enough time to respond and do corrections before it's calling you back to tell you that you haven't done what they asked you to do. And for people that know what they're doing, that's one thing because you're just behind and you know that they're going to wait to uh, give you the instructions, but there needs to be a delay from the time that the instruction is given of about 15 seconds for you just to acknowledge the fact that you have heard the instruction. And at the same moment, start a client timer that doesn't come back and give you the same instruction again for 30 seconds to complete that required task, which is answer the radio call, change heading, descend or climb, or do other things that you're instructed to do by ATC. And that'll just about do it for this video. And hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it helpful. And a little introduction to the Playatus PC24. A very nice choice in the corporate jet for about $9 million. Have a great day. And remember, YouTubers, life goes on within you and without you. Cheers.